So now, let us see the AEC workflow inside of Cinema 4D. So I have a composition right here with a bit of a 10 frame animation as you can see where the camera actually moves around. Once I'm happy with this, I can actually export this as an After Effects project. For that, I can export it as AEC workflow. So now, uh, in order to give After Effects something to work with, let's say I want to add in something like a text right here, I can export something like a null object right here as a reference. So I'm going to go over in the menu. So over here, not this one. I want a null object, so I'm gonna go hold, hold this. Let's see. There you go, that's a null object right here. I want to export this as an After Effects composition. So I'm going to keep the null object right in front of the body right here. So seems like I have my automatic keyframe turned on. I do not actually want to do that right here. I do not want to destroy the composition. Anyways, I got the composition right here. Let me just adjust the keyframe a bit and there you go. So you can see that I got the composition and I got the null object right here. Here is what I want the name uh, to be added in After Effects, let's say for example. So I can use this null object as a reference point. So over here, I want to make sure that there's something in the null object so that it's easier for the After Effect to read it. So I'm going to go over here into the null object. I'm going to uh, just right click I'm going to go over here on to render tag and then I'm going to choose external compositing because this is what I want to control in After Effects. So I'm going to go to external compositing and over here you can see that there's tags. So anchor point as you can see is in the center. You can change this around as well on top right, bottom left or so forth. I'm just going to leave that on the center and I'm, I'm going to use a solid right here. So I want an After Effects solid. Uh, 100 by 100 would do because I'm going to change that uh, to later composition anyways. So I can also choose the color that I want. So I can choose any color that I want to and there you go. So let me just choose something like purple and that will be created in After Effects. So once I'm happy with that one out, um, I want to export this out. Let me also do one thing. So let me just export um, the object buffer for both of these objects. So I'm going to choose the figure. I'm going to uh, create an object buffer for this. So I'm going to go into render tags right here. So let me just go into compositing and this is going to be an object buffer in buffer one for figure one and the floor is gonna be another object buffer. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go into render tag and I'm going to go to compositing. This is going to be buffer two right here. So buffer one uh, right there. So this one is uh, in buffer one and this one is in buffer two. So now export, let's render out everything. So let's render out the entire animation right here so that we can work around with it in After Effects. So I'm going to go to the render settings right here and you can see the renderer that's set to standard. I can decrease the uh, resolution of the overall animation right here. Right now, it's quite high, so it's 720p. So for faster render, I'm just going to have something like 320p right here. So 320, there you go. So uh, that's the aspect ratio that it actually used. And in the multipass, I'm just going to turn that on. And over here, I need to choose the frame as well from frame zero to frame 11, just like that. So zero to frame 11 and frame step is one. So in the multipass, what I want to do is I want all the lights to come in as well. So because I want the light simulation to be there uh, with, um, as After Effects lights as well, because that'll uh, give an idea of like uh, how objects will interact in After Effects as well. So I'm just going to separate the lights and over here in Multipass, let me just select all. Uh, let me make it as complex as possible. And I do need to select the uh, the Multipass uh, for the um, object buffer. So I have two object buffers. So let me bring both of those in. This is object buffer one and I'm going to have object buffer two just like this. And now I'm going to go into multipass uh, in the save, uh, not in multipass. So I'm going to disable the regular image. I'm just going to save it as a multipass image. So I'm going to save it in my desktop for now. So I'm just going to render everything out in desktop. I'm going to create a new folder right here. And this is where I'm going to save everything up. So this is going to be test, um, test AEC. All right, so the test AEC right there. So I'm going to export this as a target file and I'm not going to worry about compositing everything because this is what I'm after. So I'm going to 
uh, go over here into compositing project file and over here you can see that I can save it as an After Effects file. I want relative, timeline marker and 3D data. So I want to work around with After Effects later on. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to save the project file over here on the same folder in the new folder. I'm going to save it as AEC uh, final, just like that. And I'm going to press save. All right, so once I do that, everything is done. I've done uh, the settings. So now what I'm going to do is simply render this out and everything will be rendered as a target file right there. So target uh, right there, it the channel, everything is all right. I've selected the After Effects file. Now I'm simply going to render. So it's rendering out. Let me just fast forward the video and it has rendered everything out now. So if I were to go to the desktop, we can see the new folder right here. So let me just open that out. There's a bunch of files right here, as you can see, but not to worry about rearranging them because this is the AC final um, file that, as you can see, is already here. So I can use this uh, to import it out in After Effects. So I'm going to do the same now. So I'm going to import everything in After Effects. So After Effects is loading. So now all I need to do is import this in After Effects. So let the software load. So After Effects has been loaded and now I want to import the AEC file. So I'm just going to double click over here and then we're going to go to desktop on the new folder. I'm going to select the AEC file. So I'm going to select all files right here, but it might not actually uh, uh, like comment. Uh, like so let me just import this out and let's see what happens. It throws an error. So it says fail to connect Adobe Dynamic Link project because we have not installed the plugin of Cinema 4D yet to After Effects. So let us do that. So to get the plugin, you can simply go over here into Maxon Cinema 4D. I'm just going to right click on this and then I'm just going to open the file location of it. So because it is already there. So there's Maxon Cinema 4D right here, right click, open file location. And then you see that here's something called Exchange Plugins. And here you can see that these are the plugins for Exchange. So I'm going to go to After Effects right here. And this is the importer for Windows for CC because that's the version I'm going to work for. So C for the importer, this is it. So this is what I want to copy out right here. So then I'm going to go into my program files. I'm going to uh, navigate around onto my um, After Effects. So I'm going to go over here into After Effects right here on the support files on the plugins right here. This is where I want to paste it. So I'm going to continue because it's give me a, give me administrative tasks. So uh, this is pasted and once it's pasted, I need to restart After Effects. So let me just close After Effects right here and open that out once more. So I'm going to open out, out After Effects once more and it's loaded. And now After Effects is loaded along with the plugin. So now what I can do is double click over here and then I can just say all acceptable files. And this is acceptable now. AC file, I'm just going to import this out. So I'm going to import and all of the assets are imported. So you have the test, as you can see, the target sequences are all there. We do not need to manually arrange everything out. So if I were to click any one of these, you can see that there are, these are different channels that I can work around with. So you can just go over here and these are the different channels. These are the solids, the purple color that we made in Cinema 4D. And here are the different renders, as you can see right here. So different sort of renders right over here. So I'm just going to go over here and there you see the final render of the image, just like that. And you see a purple thing right here, which is the null object, as you can see right there. So now what I want to do is I want to add in a text tag and disable the layer. As you can see, everything has been arranged for me and I can work around with individual channels, as you can see right here. So you can work around with individual channels just like that. So you do not need to manually rearrange everything up. So in the null object, I want to add in a text. So I'm going to dra grab it in a text tool. I'm going to go over here on the text tool right here. And I'm going to say something like tutor cube, just like that. And I'm going to turn this into a 3D layer. So once I turn that into a 3D layer, let me just uh, work around with its uh, position right here. And I'm going to say zero, zero, and zero. So there you go, it's in the zero position right there. So now I'm going to make a null its parent. So I'm just going to drag this down and null is going to be its parent. So I'm going to drag the position uh, 
value right here and I'm going to go into transform value right here change it into the position of this so everything is as you can see is keyframe right there so let me just drag in the position keyframe right here uh, and make it apparent so pick whip and then I'm going to drag it right here and make it tell after null just like that I, I can just go over here and then change out the scale right here and you can see that everything scales down just like that so let me just work around with this as well so I, I actually need to work around with the opacity and there you go so instead of doing this itself so I have uh, everything sort out as you can see right there so I might want to bring down the opacity of this just like that so that's the null object as you can see and as I move along you see the text over there as well so you have the text right over there just like that so now uh, what I want to do is I want to work around with the text rearrange this out just like that and along with the camera it, the text will just move as you can see right here so you have everything out as you can see right there but it is way behind so it's acting kind of funny just like that and now you can see that the text is much more aligned so it is right in front of the 3d model and camera movement and everything else is working accordingly as you can see right there just like that so that is how you can work around with the AC workflow right there and everything is actually arranged out we do not see any lights of any shot because we have not actually kept any external lights right there with after effects kind of uh, supports right there so I can go over here change the color of the text as well and add in many elements just like that so just like that I can add in some animations as well so let me try adding in some uh, quick animation so on the effects I'm going to go over here let me just keep this on to the top I'm just going to select the text right here and then keep it on to the top so it actually moves along with the character just like that and in the animation preset in um, something like uh, transition dissolve so let me just drag it out and over here you can see that the animation actually plays out just like that and there you go it actually plays around with everything else so but anyways that is uh, too much so dissolve or dip to black everything was flashed to white just like that so it just flashes out just like that as you can see so everything is quite quick because the frame is quite low but you get the idea on how you can actually use the composition so this is how you can use the AC workflow and then seamlessly work around with everything so you can select any of the layers everything is well arranged for you and you can work around with them so let's say for example I want to work around with the refraction there you go so there's no refraction over here as you can see but there is uh, this environment right here as you can see right here so you can work around with the opacity and bring it down bring it up right there or you can just multiply this out to actually give it more feel just like that so all of this without having to you manually uh, to adjust everything out that is how you can work with the AC workflow inside of Cinema 4D uh, and After Effects so hope you guys learned something as always and as always please like comment share and subscribe